First, good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome all of you to sunny San Francisco. Glad you could come. We begin today the first of seven, and the purpose of this series is to rip away any veil that is separating us from what you might call the golden city, the city of grace, which the Bible refers to as the kingdom of heaven on earth. To us, it is not an abstraction, and it will not remain an abstraction for whoever is willing to lay aside not only cherished ideas, but ideas that are in common parlance all over the world today. And so our methods must be rather drastic in this series. We cannot afford to leave you in doubt. We cannot afford to leave you in between two worlds. Paul, on the way to Damascus, was taken outside of mortality. And as he puts it in Corinthians, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there were some who saw him. Paul puts it this way. Then he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Then he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve. After that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this presence, but some are fallen asleep. And after that he was seen of James, and then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me as one born out of due time. Not having traveled with a master, he was born out of due time. Now this, then, must be placed as Paul seeing Jesus Christ after the ascension. So it would not be impossible for anyone on earth today to see Jesus Christ after the ascension. But then Paul, having finally been accepted to some degree by the other apostles, went on to teach certain phrases that we have all accepted. The church has accepted them. They've been put into the Bible as spiritual law. And yet, for some strange reason, the church has not actually accepted the statements that they have permitted in the Bible. And as a consequence, very few people in the world have accepted the statements of Paul at certain places. You'll find that you have not accepted them either. Now, Paul tells us to be carnally minded is death. He says that in Romans. I want to read what precedes that because it's going to be a very important part of these next six weeks following today. There is, says Paul, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Now he's pointing out that if you walk in the Spirit, you are in the One. You're not in a karmic state. You're not in condemnation. But if you walk after the flesh, you are in a karmic state. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And here is a human being walking the earth saying, 
that he is free from the law of death. How could that be? What has he discovered that makes him free from the law of death that you and I have not discovered? He's going to tell us. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Now all of this sounds very religious talk. But it isn't. It's esoteric talk. And you've got to look under it. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now let's get down to the line. For they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Now that's translated carnally minded and you can see that it could be translated just as easily to be material minded as death. The secret of Paul that he was not subject to death was that he was not material minded. Today we're going to see the Bible another way. Yes, still another way than we've ever seen it. Science has helped us out by giving us a new phrase. Every school child in high school, college, universities around the world knows all about the atomic theory. Metaphysicians know about the atomic theory. Theologians know about the atomic theory. And strangely, just about everyone accepts it. Even religion accepts the atomic theory. In a sort of a fuzzy way. And yet, atoms are the substance of matter. To be material-minded is death. To be atomic-minded is death. As long as there is a belief in the existence of the atom, you fall under Paul's statement, to be material-minded is death. If you think there is an atom in this universe, Paul is telling you, you must die. To be atomic-minded is death because science has given us the statement and the proof that the atom is the substance of the matter of which we are material-minded. And so we must come to grips today with the atom, and then you will see why the Bible, up to this point, has not yet fulfilled its function on the earth, but why it will. For 1800 years, there was no mention of the atom in the Bible. And there couldn't be any because no one had discovered and proved that the atom was the substance of all things. And so as a consequence, no commentator on the Bible before the 18th century ever referred to the atom. And yet the Bible itself had said, the flesh profiteth nothing. And what is flesh, says science? Now, flesh is atoms. Therefore, the Bible was saying, the atom profiteth nothing. The Bible had said, Henceforth know ye no man after the flesh, and flesh is Adam. So it could have said, Henceforth know ye no man after the Adam. In other words, the metaphysician says there is no matter, but he has not gone the whole way. He still thinks there are atoms, even though he thinks there is no matter. And so we come to this place. We have in our studies gathered together the materials of truth, like building a fire. We have the shavings, we have the logs, we have a little can of kerosene, but we don't have a fire because that little tip of sulfur hasn't been ignited. And so it is with us in truth. We have all the truth. What keeps us out of the kingdom of heaven? 
We have not lit the flame of self. And the separation between the self, which is the living kingdom of heaven on earth, and the material world, is that little fellow, the invisible atom. Until you recognize the nature of the atom and know what an atom is, and become conscious of that of which you are now unconscious, the veil remains there separating you from the grace, the power, and the dominion which are implicit in a complete and full understanding of the Bible. Let's take a look at the atom, and nothing we say about it will conform to what science says. And this is precisely what religion has missed and should have said when the atom was introduced to the world as the substance of matter. You will never see one atom that can know God. And if you add one million atoms together, you will still not find a million atoms that can know God. And as long as a man or a woman is an atom or a group of atoms, that individual can never know God. And yet, to know God aright is life eternal. Whoever remains an atom or a group of atoms or a configuration of atoms can never know life eternal. The atom is a robot. And whoever is an atom or a group of atoms remains a robot because the atom is controlled. Now look over in Alameda. You're in your apartment and the next thing you know, there's no house around you. There's just 13 tons of steel, two and a half tons of fuel plummeting out of the sky. An apartment house demolished. What was that plane made of? It was made of atoms. What was the fuel made of? It was made of atoms. What were the people made of? They were made of atoms. What was the house made of? They are made with atoms. Who controls the atom? Nobody. Go down to Texas. There are 15 or 20 kids in a bus. And the driver doesn't see the signals or he does and doesn't remember what to do. Something confuses him. He stops at the train tracks and then suddenly he starts again in spite of the warning and the bus, bus is demolished by a train 10 or 17 children die made of atoms the bus made of atoms the train made of atoms the children no control you read about the priest he was beaten to death Somebody stabbed him four times and ran away. The knife, Adams. The man who stabbed him, Adams. The priest, Adams. Adams are robots. There isn't a thing about an atom that you can control as a human being. You think you can. You have this sense of controlling the atom. You can smash the atom. You can build skyscrapers. You can build modern cities of the future but nobody's going to live in them except atoms. And as long as we continue to accept the existence of an atom as a reality, we will find that planes will continue to fall out of the sky, people will still be killed, soldiers will still go to war. There will be no control because the atom is not under the government of God. God does not control the atom for a very simple reason. God never made the atom. Now take an avalanche. You live in the valley and the avalanche comes down. Somebody dies. The avalanche was made of dirt, the earth. And the earth is made of atoms. And God doesn't control that earth. That isn't the earth which is the Lord's. The atomic earth is not of the Father. The flood that comes and demolishes a city is made of water, and that water is made of atoms, and those atoms kill. And the atoms of bombs kill. And the atoms of bullets, and the atoms of germs, the atoms of tumors, 
the atoms of avalanches and diseases and hurricanes and earthquakes and fire and flood they kill and once we accept that atoms are made by God we have accepted God to be a killer we have accepted God to create an imperfect world the very acceptance of the atom as even existent is enmity against God a denial of the all perfection of God now this is not your conscious will or desire to call God a liar a thief or a killer or a murderer but the minute you say one atom exists on this earth you have said so and this is what is in the consciousness of mankind in the consciousness of mankind atoms exist but in the consciousness of students who are looking for the kingdom of heaven on earth every belief that an atom is real that an atom exists in spite of the logic of it and the reason of it and the sense perception of it in spite of the world belief of it in spite of the overwhelming evidence of science of it if you wish to break the veil you must step outside the atom for you it must have no existence the atom profiteth nothing henceforth know ye no man after atoms atoms are grass atoms have no existence in God now when you see that atoms kill and you therefore know that atoms are not of God you can go to the third verse in John God created all that was made and you see atoms that kill were not created by God and therefore because God created all that was made the next phrase that which God did not create has no existence God did not create atoms and therefore they have no existence what's the point of believing that there is no matter if you still believe there are atoms which are the substance of matter and so we have to go from the belief that there is no matter into the belief that there is no invisible atom to cause the existence of matter we're taking the legs right out from under the table now this then is not a metaphysical study at this point you're in the mysticism of the understanding which came to Paul to be atomic minded is the 20th century translation of to be carnally minded is death to be atomic minded is death and I say this with all sincerity that science is killing us with atoms and science will kill anyone who will let him believe that atoms exist in this universe that means that the true mystic the true student of Christ must join Jesus Christ to reach that place where he can say I have overcome this world of atoms for me they have no existence God did not make them the atoms that kill God did not make and therefore the atoms are not there and I will not try to say there are some good atoms and there are some bad atoms there are no atoms And when this becomes something you will be willing to accept, then you've got to take it into meditation daily. Until for you it's so resonantly clear that you can look at anything in the world and know that whatever you see in this world is based in the belief that atoms are there. That's the universal belief. And that's your human unconscious belief and you've got to look right at what you see knowing it cannot be there because atoms cannot be there and atoms are the substance of that mirage
That is why mankind has not found the kingdom of heaven on earth. Man is still accepting the opinions of science and the hopes of religion. And the middle path goes right through both. Hardly anyone can really believe that religion is going to bring heaven to earth. There's not the slightest indication this is possible for religion to do. Religion has been asleep and will continue to be a sleepwalker. And it will continue to dream. It will continue to walk in its costumes and its rituals while out here the world falls apart at the seams and religion will promise forever that in a heavenly hereafter all this will be taken care of. We've learned about that fairy tale. Science, on the other hand, seems to be the great white hope. Science has the atom. And you know, while we're talking about it, science has already passed the place of even believing that the atom is the substance of matter themselves. They simply haven't broadcast it. They are frantically working on the subatom. But that's quite a difference than an atom. They're working on subatoms and they're going to go into micro, micro atoms. They're going to diminish and diminish in size. They're no longer under the belief that atoms are the substance. They pass that belief. And when they get a new belief, it's going to substitute for the old one. And then they're going to make a great hurrah about the next belief. This is the way it is. Nobody will say, but doesn't that disprove the previous belief you had? What was the substance of everything before atoms were discovered? We've all forgotten about that. And we'll forget about atoms when they get the next name for a new substance. And the answer is they're fishing and fishing and fishing for something you cannot find in a material world. Now you're breathing right now and you're breathing atoms. The breakfast you had was made of atoms. The fuel you put in your car is made of atoms. And as long as you have been able to do these things today, you're going to continue that those things are reality. You're going to continue in that belief because you know you're going to have to have two or three solid meals a day, and if they're made of atoms, you're going to need atoms today. You need atoms to live by. You need atoms to drive by. You need atoms to work by. You need atoms for everything you do. And in the end, the atom buries you. Because it never was there. Now, you know, in grade school, there are some who learn at a certain pace. And there's always one who's a little quicker. Or maybe two or three. And so the teacher forgets about that one or two or three. The teacher has to teach the class and so that one or two or three who are quicker they simply do not go at the level of their capabilities they have to be slowed down for the class our work has been just the opposite there are in this world those who are quicker spiritually more prepared to receive a certain level of the truth than others And rather than slow down them so that the masses can get the word, our function has been to find that one out of every thousand. That's why these classes in the main were planned for small groups. We haven't been looking for everybody. We've been looking for that student in the class who normally is slow down to the pace of the masses and we are trying to bring the pace up to his pace and we expect only those students who can move at that pace to be in the class. That's the kind of class this is meant to be. And now you can see why. Because I'm asking you to consider the fact that the atomic universe of science has no existence. That the atomic world of atom smashes does not exist. 
and to take your faith out of it. That our rebirth has to be to be reborn out of the atom. And this cannot be done in any way that is known to man except by first understanding it, understanding what makes an atom, realizing that the atom that man is chasing for his extra leisure and extra comfort and extra income is quicksand. As he gets it, he sinks into it. And he spends his life seeking it, seeking more atoms. Everything material that you seek is made of atoms. And as you seek more and more of it and learn to depend upon it, in the end it fails you because it never was there. Now, when you have found a place where you understand this atom and its non-existence, then you will have to go into meditation with specific exercises. And you will find when you do this, and we'll do several today, you will come to a place where you can consciously know the non-existence of the atom, and yet you will be in another place right where the world thinks the atom is. Suppose we take a box. Here's a box with three dimensions. Now this little box is about two inches high, five or six inches wide, and about three or four inches deep. And of course, being wood, and wood being made of atoms, here's a box made of invisible atoms. You know God didn't make this box. I can burn it or step on it or shatter it. And yet, there it is in front of you. Now, when you know that atoms are supposed to be the substance of this box and God didn't make atoms, then your mystical question is, where is the box? When you remove the belief that atoms are here, is there a box here? And when you know that atoms cannot be here, can this have length and height and width anymore? Are not the dimensions gone? Can a box that is not here have dimensions? You see, it's all predicated on the invisible atom. If the invisible atom is here, then you're going to see a box. And you're going to accept the box. And you're going to accept the dimensions of the box. But once you take the legs out of the table, how can the table be standing if there are no legs? If there are no atoms, and atoms are the substance of wood, can there be a box here? Now I say to you, Jesus Christ says, no, there's no box here. There's nothing physical. The message is that only spirit is here, and spirit is not a physical box. Now when you remove the dimensions of the box, the three dimensions, because you know that the box is not there, in that understanding you have found the fourth dimension. And that is the kingdom of heaven on earth. You cannot find the fourth dimension, the city that lieth foursquare, until you are ready to tear up your belief in the city that lieth three square. Now, if you believe this box is here, you're carnally minded. You're material minded. And to be material minded is death. Because as soon as you accept the box here, you've got to accept the physical body. You've got to accept the physical world. You've got to accept physical conditions like disease and death and disaster. They're just as physical as this box. 
You can't draw the line and say these are here and those are not. You've got to accept all of the disasters in the world and all of the germs in the world if you believe that box is here. Now, we've believed that box is here for all of our lives and for all of our previous lives. And now we're coming to the place where the Bible has brought us. There is no physical matter on the earth. Now, when Joel writes a chapter, this is a spiritual universe, could it be any different than saying this is not a material universe? What's the difference how he says it? This is a spiritual universe, or he says this is not a material universe. They're one and the same. What's the difference if Paul says to be carnally minded is death, or to be materially minded is death, or to be atomically minded is death? One and the same. It's just that we have to put the pieces together and face them, and now you have to take a box like that, and you have to go into meditation about it. until you can come to the conclusion that God did not make anything that is temporary, anything that can die, anything that is perishable, anything that is finite, anything that is separated from something else. The Spirit of God is the only creator and it creates out of its own spirit all that is. And we're in a spiritual universe where there are no boxes. We're in a spiritual universe where nobody can die. We're in a spiritual universe where planes don't fall out of heaven into the ground and demolish people. Why? Because we're not caught in the illusion of the atom. Let's go back now. Inside ourselves try to understand this atom let's take a good long look at it there are some atoms that make up this box of wood there are some atoms that make up the book you read there are some atoms that make up the chair you sit on the floor you walk upon and they're all atoms separated from each other the chair has nothing to do with this box they're separated Remember when Jesus was crucified? How those who stood there, the soldiers, could not divide one garment because it was a seamless robe. It wasn't separated. The teaching there was that the seamless garment we wear is the knowledge that spirit is all and spirit is not atoms. Spirit is not matter, but spirit is also not atoms. You know spirit isn't matter. Now you must know spirit is not atoms. And spirit is all. That's not a spiritual box. What is it? So we come to how the box gets there. And that's all the illusion of form in one little box. It's the illusion of your own form. Where are these atoms that we say do not exist? Where are they? They're in the carnal mind. That's why to be carnally minded is death. And what is the carnal mind? There are two kinds of carnal mind, the universal and the individual. They're really one and the same. There is a carnal mind universal, and its thought is the atom. The atom in the carnal mind is the only place the atom exists. In the world mind, there are atoms of thought. That's all atoms are, the thought of the world mind. And the patterns that move through those atoms reach your mind. And because your senses are atoms, 
your senses respond to the atoms all around you. The response of the atoms of your senses to the atoms around you makes the form. Everything you see is your response to pattern thought of the world mind. And the invisible building blocks of the atom enable you to form impressions which appear as the things you call material. In other words, there are three illusions, even four, before you come to the box. There's the world mind, it's thought of atoms, there's your mind, and your reaction to the world mind's thought of the atom. The world mind, the atom, your mind, and your reaction. This is the sequence, the quadruple sense of illusion that finally produces that which God did not create. And you may be a mother and create a baby. It's the same process. It's still the world mind, its thought called atoms, in patterns that reach the human mind and then are brought forth into an appearance and we think it's out there. That if the atoms aren't there, the forms that we think are out there aren't there either. They are in the cosmic mind. The accident of the jet in Alameda and the bus being hit by a train in Texas are the same accident. You don't see them as one accident because they come in different places and different times. But it's like a meteor traveling through the sky and fringes of the tail fall off here and fall off there. They may come in different areas of the country, but they're all off the same meteor. And everything that happens in this world comes off the same illusion, the same cosmic illusion, the same cosmic mind which engulfs everything that walks the earth. In short, we are walking as atoms in atoms, and this is the tomb. There are no atoms out there. And when you remove the belief that they're out there, you will find that nothing is separated from anything. All that separates you from Chicago right now is land and air. But the atoms of air aren't there and the atoms of land aren't there. Nothing is separated. It's all the one spirit. You should learn how to meditate on the absence of atoms from the world. There are so many ways to come at an understanding. We could go back to Times Square as you watch the bulbs around the building flash out the message of the news. And you realize the bulbs aren't moving. The bulbs are stationary. What's moving? And yet there's a feeling of motion But the bulbs aren't moving and that's all that's there. The illusion of motion is a reaction of the senses. And that's what gives us the news. You see a screen and there's a horse on the screen in the movie. It runs for 50 miles. How can a horse run for 50 miles on a screen that's only 50 feet wide? You're willing to accept it. The screen is 50 feet wide, and if the horse ran for 50 feet, it would be off the screen. But it runs for 500 miles or 50 miles, and we accept it. Now come out here in this world of atoms, and it's the same illusion. We're willing to think we're doing all these things.
and we are doing him only because we have accepted the material appearances as real. They are made of the cosmic illusion called atom or the mist. And when you know the atom isn't there, you know the external world isn't there. And this means absolutely nothing to the human mind. But it does to that one in a thousand whom we have been led to believe is attracted to this particular class. One in a thousand, you may be the one in a thousand from your area. From your particular household. In your particular lifespan. And if you are that one in a thousand, as has been indicated by the previous classes, then for you the meaning of there are no atoms out there becomes the basis for a way of life. What are we to be reborn out of? What's the point of talking about a first resurrection? or a transformation or a Christ mind if we're not to be reborn out of something you see it has always been the invisible atom we're to be reborn out of the belief that we are that invisible atom which has been labeled as the essence of a man by science now let's meditate on there are no atoms here See if you are quickened. I found it necessary to practice this many, many times. But from it came a great peace, a great assurance, a great certainty. And I can tell you too, from it came a great deal of power. because once you can rest in the assurance that the atom is not here or there you have found the unconditioned unconfined universe of spirit you are way ahead of every Nobel Prize winner in the world you are out of the ignorance of science and religion you are out of all the dismal failures that have been brought into this earth by well-meaning souls trying to help mankind and you're doing it the Christ way not what would be reasonable to a human mind but you're refusing to live in that which God did not create there are no atoms here there are no atoms anywhere. And therefore, all things that allegedly are made of atoms are equally non-existent. That's how you will find the capacity to come above the belief that matter has reality. The invisible substance of matter does not exist. And then the carnal mind to you will be exposed as a fraud. The universal belief in matter will be exposed as a fraud. You will find yourself in not a material consciousness, but released into your spiritual consciousness. If there are no atoms, where are the material conditions which depend on the existence of atoms? They are equally non-existent.
What are the germs? The germs are only there in the cosmic mind because we think there are atoms to cause germs. But if there are no atoms, the germs have no substance. They're exposed as only ideas in the cosmic mind. Every so-called evil condition on the earth has no substance to support it when you know that there are no atoms. And when your consciousness has no atoms, you have found that infinite vacuum which is filled by the spirit. If you had a quart pitcher and you had a quart of orangeade and a quart of lemonade and wanted to pour them both into the quart pitcher, it couldn't be done. So it is with spirit. If you have atoms in your belief, there's no room for the spirit to fill your consciousness. You can't fill your consciousness with spirit and matter, with spirit and atoms. And so there must be a conscious routing out of what had been the unconscious acceptance of the existence of atoms. When you consciously route out that unconscious acceptance and knowingly refuse to accept the belief that atoms are the substance of anything in this world, you will find a light begins to dawn. You will find the Christ mind begins to come over the horizon to take its place as your mind. You will be able to see why the Christ could appear where a storm was and without thought knowing the non-existence of a substance to make a storm could remove the appearance of a storm could appear in a room where there is death to a 12 year old and know there is no atom there to make a 12 year old die no atom there to make 12 year old bodies only spirit being there, there is no substance to cause death. There is no substance there to die. The atom is non-existent. All that is there is the spirit of God. That consciousness unveils the non-existence of the atom and life flows. That's the same consciousness that said, you cannot bury me. Because you are not looking at a body made of atoms. Having overcome the atom, you know God aright. And only by overcoming the atom can you know God aright. And no matter how you try to think it out, you'll come right back to the same solution that has been found through the ages. You must go back into the deep womb of silence there to let the Christ you have invited by your acknowledgement of the non-existence of anything unlike God. That which can kill is not of God. That which can die is not of God. And you'll find that every condition in the world, every problem, every evil is found only in the atom which has no existence. When you overcome the belief in the atom, you overcome the belief in all of the conditions of the world. Because that's where they are. On your first meditation about there are no atoms out there, you may not find anything startling happening or on your second or third. I assure you, if 
you will do this every morning until you do find something. You will know why you have been brought into this study. Now it should be clear then that what we are now recommending is contrary to everything that Tynes teaches in the world today. And yet, it is the great purpose of the Bible to take us out of the false directions of science, out of the false directions of religion, and to restore us to our soul. The only way you're going to step out of the atomic world that dies is to live in the soul which is not in atoms. Your soul is free of this atomic universe. Your soul is not in space, not in matter, not in time not in the motion of matter. And as long as you believe there's an atom, you're not in your soul, you're in your mind. When you get past the belief in matter, in the atom, you'll find you're in your soul. And this opens you to reality. Now, there's a sequel to this. To be carnally minded is death. But, says Paul, to be spiritually minded is life. As the veil of the atom disintegrates in your belief and you are spiritually minded, you're in the seamless garment. You're not in separated atoms. You're in the one. The one is not five billion atoms the one is the one there are no atoms in the one in the realization of the one you're out of the atom and if you're sitting in an Alameda apartment house and a plane plummets out of the sky I can assure you it won't hit that building if you're sitting, on, sitting in a bus and the driver goes through where a train is coming I can assure you something will happen to prevent that accident Wherever you are in the knowledge that the atom does not exist, you are immune to the action of the atom. And that's what you're going to discover for yourself when you have your meditations on the non-existence of the atom. You will find that those who suffer in this world are suffering from their unconscious belief that the atom exists. They don't even know that they believe it. Never gave it any thought. Just took it for granted. And when you take yourself out of that unconscious belief, I believe you will see very pleasant and startling things happen in your life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was life. The Word was God, and God was the life. But you see, that's only a translation. It hasn't done the world much good to see that in the Bible. The new translation someday is going to be, before the Adam, there was spirit. 
in the beginning means before the atom was the word means there was spirit before atoms came into the consciousness of man there was a spirit and we must go back before the beginning because before the atom I am you take yourself out of the creature called the atom now there's a great symbology in the fact that the atom which has no real existence is also Adam in Genesis because out of Adam comes Eve and out of Eve comes her progeny and out of her progeny comes all of God's declaration that he will curse her progeny Do you see the sequence out of the Adam comes our belief in matter and out of our belief in matter comes the problems of the world the dying world is born out of a belief in the atom. Just as all the accursed progeny of Eve come out of Adam. It's the source of the nothingness which is called the arm of flesh. I also believe that with this knowledge and the practice of it you will quickly find another level of the healing consciousness for yourself for those who come to you it is definitely going to prove to it be a new landmark in our work there are no atoms and you're required to know this in order to come into the Christ consciousness to practice this you cannot serve the belief that there are atoms and serve God too that's serving two masters the spirit and the atom you can only serve the one master to find your life eternal so I'm going to recommend that each morning our meditation be there are no atoms let the significance of that lift you up to where you can look at a material world and know that it cannot be there because it is composed of atoms that are not there This is a good time to pause, collect ourselves, and then we're going to put our knowledge to the test in the second half.